my name is Claudia. We are now in Hopferbach in the southern part of Germany, in the Allgäu, Bavaria. I'm 42 years old. I'm originally from Munich. And uh, then I was living in a lot of uh, different countries, like six years in Switzerland, three and a half years in Australia, in a camper van. Yeah, when I was living in a van, I learned that I can live more minimalistic, like I don't need so much uh, stuff. So the beauty of having less things is that you feel lighter. You just only concentrated on the things you really need and you love. After living in a huge house <laughs> for five years and then in a shared apartment, I had the dream of living in my own little tiny house. <laughs> and I realized that dream in 2022 pretty quick. Like in January I started having that dream and in October I had my tiny house here on the spot. So let me show you a bit the outside. So here's the stairs and um, there's also two plugs outside which was really important to me. I can have some electricity outside and I'm also charging my electric car. <laughs> As you can see, uh, the roof is quite angled. That was uh, one thing I had to, or they said I should do <laughs> living here, because then A, it fits into the town center, because all the other houses have the roofed angle, but actually it also makes sense in this part of Germany, because we can get a lot of snow, and then the snow can better melt down with the angled roof. And here you can see the sewage pipe, so I'm connected to the normal sewage system. Here that's the fresh water pipe and we had to put around the heating and put on more insulation because it just gets really cold outside. And here you can still see the name of the company, Berghaus. <laughs> and I found it pretty funny because Berg means mountain in German and I'm a lot in the mountains for skiing. <laughs> so I'm a Berg fan. <laughs> So, and here we also have a little cupboard where I can put in some stuff. So in winter time I, I don't put too much in there because it would just freeze. And at the moment I also use a bit um, the space under the house. <laughs> so I put my skis down there because I don't have an extra storage room. And um, then I have here the two solar panels waiting to be set up. And now we will go inside my tiny house. <laughs> Welcome to my tiny house, Corps de la Grün. <laughs> A friend named it like this because it's so green from the outside. And maybe if you've been, ever been to Oktoberfest in Munich, this is a famous German song. <laughs> so, here I hang up my coats and also the chairs, which is pretty practical. And then we're straight in my living room on the couch, which is pretty comfy. And I can also have guests staying there. I can pull it out and then put that down and put it over completely. Then I have a full bed, like two meters. And up there I have my books. These are just some nice uh, things I bought at IKEA. And then I have my beamer up there because I don't like to have a television because <laughs> I don't like watching TV. and. Yeah, if I want to watch a movie, I just pull down the screen, which is pretty uh, well hid near the cupboard. Now for a brief message from our sponsor, Planta. I have a confession to make. I've killed many houseplants on accident, but I really, really want to go from a killer to a green thumb goddess. 
That's why I was thrilled to discover Planta, a plant care app for beginners and experts alike. Time management is tough for me, and that's why I love Planta's intelligent care schedule. It notifies me when it's time to water, fertilize, repot my plants, and more. Using their light meter tool, and based on your skills, how much time you want to spend on plant love, and your location, Planta will recommend plants for your home. To get started, enter your house plants and answer a few questions. Not sure what kind it is? No problem. Planta can scan a photo to identify your plant. But what if your plants aren't feeling good? Well, Dr. Planta can help figure out what's wrong and set up a treatment plan. Keep your plants alive with Planta. Click the link in the description to get 20% off using our code TINY20. And then here we have my table, also from Ikea, with some nice drawers. And um, two, two sides, which you can easily set up. So if it's just me eating here or watching uh, or doing something on my laptop, I just put up one side. And then if I have more guests, I move the table into the middle and I can set up the other side as well. So then I have one meter 50 wide table. And then here we have the heating, uh, infrared heating. Everybody always asks me, oh, where do you get the heating from in your house? Because it gets quite cold here in winter time. We had minus 20 a couple of weeks ago. So a wooden oven would have been nice also, but there's just too much action <laughs> chopping the wood and then putting on the fire. So this is way easier with the infrared heating. And now welcome to my kitchen. I really love cooking. I mainly cook vegan food as I'm a vegan food um, nutritionist consultant. So this was really important to me to still have the normal space for cooking. So this is like in a normal house, the, the oven has a proper size. The plates up here, that's just two for cooking. But I mean, when do you ever need four plates? <laughs> and if I'm alone, it's, it's just too much to handle for two is just fine. And then I mainly used it big pot and just cook up a bigger portion so I can freeze something in and then I just reheat it. And here I have my spices. That was also important for me to have that hanging up there so I don't have everything in the cupboard over there and then I always have to take it out. And here we have the dishwasher which is also the size of a normal dishwasher. <laughs> Like not small at all. And if I cook a lot, I even get that full once a week for I'm living here alone. And here we have the sink, which is pretty funny because I can move around it. And also the, the black granite sink is pretty nice. So that the uh, back house chose. Um, so I didn't really ask about the, the sink, but I really liked it. And they also um, put on all these uh, garbage, little garbage bin, bins in here for me. And as I don't produce a lot of waste, <laughs> a lot of garbage, it's just once a month I fill up my garbage bin and put it outside. And then here we have the drawers for, for cutlery for the plates, glasses, and that's really just perfect enough for me as a single living here. There used to be another cupboard down here, but um, we took that out and put in the washing machine. Now up here is the microwave. That's um, maybe a little bit too big, that <laughs> could have been smaller, but... So here are the, the clothes which I have to hang up. And then here I have the cupboard for all my food. And that's really a lot of space for someone living here alone. <laughs> and down there is the fridge. I would definitely give the advice to somebody who wants to live in a tiny house in Germany to first look for the spot to set it up and to do everything with the mayor and everything with the council that you're really allowed to set it up how it has to look 
and then build it. So here I had it pretty easy. The, the only thing they wanted is that I have a proper angled roof and uh, that it's a red roof <laughs> with red uh, plates. And that was it. I'm uh, renting the land from a nice couple which is just uh, living on the other side of the road in, in an old farmhouse. So they, they kept it for the grandchild, but at the moment the grandchild is just one year old. <laughs> so I sort of have the permission to, to live here for up to 17 years, <laughs> which is not too bad. Electricity is not included in, in renting the spot. The electricity I have to pay, but they paid like setting up everything for the electricity and the water system, which was quite expensive. The ground is like 150 per square meter, so 300 euros a month. In the nearest future, um, I, I will get a neighbor, <laughs> probably, because there's a spot for a second tiny house. I think it would be nice to have somebody here who's also maybe interested in gardening a bit and uh, growing own food, like fruits and vegetables. And then we come into my bathroom. <laughs> so here we just have the wooden sliding door because it makes no sense to have a proper door here. And this is a really nice shower. Like a friend uh, whose uh, brother has a tiny house, she said, oh, that's quite a huge bathroom. Like her brother, he, he's got a way smaller bathroom. And it's even a rain shower. So. I can have the water coming from the top or here with the normal handle. Yeah. <laughs> here we have the sink with a little cupboard underneath. That's also just perfect enough space for me living alone. Here we have the hot water boiler for the hot water. And again, a little IKEA cupboard for some more towels. The toilet is a normal water toilet. It's the same thing in Germany with the, all the regulations. They prefer you to be connected to the normal sewage system. <laughs> they don't really like it if you're setting up a compost toilet. But a compost toilet would have um, taken up more space. So actually, <laughs> this is nice. And here we have another infrared uh, heating plate. This is a bit smaller than in the living room because of course I don't need so much uh, warmth in the bathroom. And we come back into that long um, thing where I can also make yoga. <laughs> so it's really long enough just with the width. I have to be a little bit careful. <laughs> so let me show you the bedroom. So here I have the ladder I take out. I first wanted to have a fixed um, ladder. That was too expensive and too difficult to build. So I said, okay, just uh, make me the normal ladder. And I have my huge mattress here. <laughs> so really big space. I think it's um, 2 meter 20 by 2 meter 50. So it's quite big. It's uh, on top of the bathroom and then I also have two windows here. So I guess in summertime I have to leave them open at night. I don't know yet how hot it gets, but in winter time I close them. And here I have space for more clothes. So that's again boxes from Ikea. <laughs> So I have enough space up here to, to sit normally. If you're one meter 80 or two meters, then it would get a bit tricky, but I'm also not too, too tall, so that works out fine. And I also found that pretty funny that here they, they made again the green, green color from the outside. I 
I found out that when I live in a big house, I'm more uh, disorganized. Like I put stuff everywhere. <laughs> like my my I was living in the house of my boyfriend, and it, it's like 120 square meters, <laughs> and he was also shouting at me, "Ah, oh, you put your stuff there and here and everywhere." And <laughs> like sometimes it took me one hour to find something, and in in the little house, in the tiny house, I, I have to be more organized. Everything has its place and I think that's also good for me because I'm losing too much time <laughs> searching for things. Yeah, so I paid uh, 58,400 or something like this for the tiny house. So for me it's also that I don't have the commitment to pay a big house off like 20 years of my life. Like I'm only working, working, working to pay a house off. And, uh, that was also something I never wanted to do. Like it's already hard for me to live longer than one year in one spot because I lived that nomadic life for such a long time. But then being bound to to a house for 20, 30 years and just working for that was just not an option for me. So this is something a tiny house you can easily pay off in five years. for watching our video and for stopping by Tiny House Expedition. I'm Alexis. And I'm Christian. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And for more tiny home tours and stories, click the videos below. And join us on Instagram for bonus content. Including face-to-face -face conversations with us. <laughs> we hope to see you there. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.